touch, a look tender and fleeting. We are scared little creatures, aching for eternal belonging, that unspoken agreement that we are in this together. And yet we avert our eyes. I lower my tone, I play it cool. I'll hold on to this real me, this messy apparition of vulnerability and tears until I find the one, someone who is worth it. But implicitly, I understand that this one will not accept the real me unconditionally. I will need to persuade them with something that is not quite me, some general attractive qualities, good looks, pleasant conversation, a worthy mask. Is this deception? To reveal myself later on, after I have tricked them into letting me in. All for the selfish desire to be loved, to be at one with the other. And so I play it cool. What do we wish for when we wish to be loved? Is it pure narcissism? The childish fantasy of endless affirmation? That some poor being will afford you the constant reassurance that, for example, you are permitted to be here? that your presence is tolerated, if not appreciated. This isn't sustainable. Resentment develops, and a love based on self-admiration is like tickling yourself. You miss out on the pleasant surprises, the intolerable unpredictability of the other, of a whole separate soul, afforded to love you how they see fit. If I admire my own looks, for example, I will wish to be admired by my looks. But what if they find something else unaccounted for, something also worth loving? What if they cherish the bed hair that I've always been ashamed of? What if they have fallen for my strange thoughts? Perhaps I wish to be loved for the things I do not even consider lovable. And so that sort of love that demands that I am admired the way I wish to be, well, that just isn't enough. Do I wish for devotion, to give the other all of me? How simple it would be to answer any ambiguity in life, what am I to do, what am I to think of, with the simple answer of my beloved. I will think of you, I will spend time with you. This too will bring resentment. To prop up another human as a god, as the arbiter of your life choices, is to sign up for disappointment. Is this not just a clever way of avoiding the responsibility that comes with freedom? To give it to the other completely. And surely there are plenty who are willing to do that for you, to take in your energy and agency and make you a tool of esteem and praise. And you will give it relentlessly. Until you find that they too are human, you do not love them, you worship them. Nobody can live up to that. Nobody deserves your freedom more than you do. So what is this desire to be loved? It is not to live for someone. To live below them, as it were, nor is it to live above them in constant affirmation. Each leaves me incomplete. So is this my desire, to feel complete? Is this not achievable in solitude? Perhaps, but the nights grow cold and I tire of these inner dialogues. Life is hard enough on my own, and I wish to make coffee for us. I wish for an us. All I know beyond reason, that it is often better with others than alone. I do not wish to live for someone, nor do I wish that someone would live for me. Both forms of love guarantee resentment, bitterness, and stagnation. So what do I live for? Simply, I live, and I know that it is better to live with another, side by side. It is not always easy. We will misunderstand each other, we will bicker, we will overstep and miscalculate our proximities. The inherent clumsiness of being guarantees conflict. But are these not the very points where love is most felt? Is this not what we fight for, what we ache for, those awkward attempts at connection, when our masks slip off and we stare into our eyes, two shaking bundles of desire draped in our beautiful flaws? whispering to each other, it's okay, I'm still here.
This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey everyone, let's talk about learning. You know, the kind that's not just about memorizing facts, but about truly understanding and solving problems. That's where Brilliant comes in. Brilliant isn't your average online learning tool. It's a dynamic platform that challenges you to think critically, solve puzzles, and master concepts in math, science, and computer science. But it's not just about acing exams. Brilliant helps you build a habit of learning. By engaging with their interactive courses and daily challenges, you'll develop problem-solving skills that will benefit you for life. And here's the best part. Brilliant fits into your busy schedule. With bite-sized lessons and a mobile-friendly interface, you can learn anytime, anywhere. Brilliant recently launched a ton of new content in data, all of which uses real-world data to train you to see trends and make better informed decisions. This has helped me a lot in learning how to parse and visualize massive data sets to make them easier to interpret. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash sisyphus55 or click on the link in the description. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.